I'm reminded that it's covered with His grace I am encouraged I am not in bondage for His word is in me I can declare and believe that I am set free I am encouraged by His word is free So be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged Hi everyone! Today I will be a bit more realistic with my discussion or with what I have to say to you guys, right? So what I will be talking about is struggling as youths in Christianity. And before I go any further, I will be giving you the definition and also a synonym for the word struggle. So the definition of struggle is um, a forceful effort to get free of restraint or to resist attack. And a synonym for the word struggle is to wrestle. Now when I saw the word wrestle, I was like, okay, that's good because as it relates to Christianity, it is like we're in a constant fight. It's like it's a constant battle for our soul, right? And in Christianity, we get to understand that we all want to make it to heaven. And every day it is a fight for us to do the right thing and not to yield or to give in to the wrongs that are presented before us and things like that, right? So basically every day we can say that we struggle in Christianity to be set free or to be freed from um, whatsoever that tries to hold us or hinder us from growing in God, that tries to hinder us from experiencing God, from wanting to do the right things. So, as youths, we struggle to be consistent in reading the Bible, in praying, in going on fasting, right? We struggle to be obedient to the Word of God, obedient to, um, to the spiritual urges of what He's telling us to do. So, I don't know if there are times when you are probably on the road, you're at home, and you know there's an urge to just probably get up and pray. There's an urge to just declare certain certain things in your atmosphere but uh, we have a tendency to struggle to be um, obedient to those spiritual urges we struggle to comply to the complete word of God so for example we would want to we would want to probably go on fasting and pray, but we do not want to worship. We have a tendency to probably want to dress and look good, but we so we don't want to dress modest. So we have a tendency to um want to even be obedient to say that we do not lie, we do not steal, but we want to fornicate, we want to give in to adultery, we want to give in to serving other idols and making other things idols in our life. And it cannot be like that. So as youths, we struggle to um, comply or be obedient to the complete word of God. Um, as youths, we struggle to love because we have been broken so many times. Because we have been hurt and so most of the times hurt comes from our family members persons that we hold close to us and even in our churches but today I just want to encourage you guys I just want to let you understand that do not let anything in life allow you to not be obedient to the complete Word of God the Bible did declare that we should fellowship with one another Another. So ensure that no matter what happens, you are still fellowshipping with your with the members or with the body of Christ. Bless the name of the Lord. Um, as individuals, we struggle to do good, as I um, explained earlier, and we struggle to depend solely on God. 
bless the name of the Lord. And there are many other things that we struggle with. And the reason why I say these, it's because these are things that we face on a daily basis. Every day we get up, these things face us and we have to be using the word of God to be like, okay, the, the word of God says that I am not supposed to do this and I am supposed to resist the very appear or shun the very appearance of evil the bible did say i'm not supposed to give in to whatsoever may come in this aspect of my life and things like that so basically today i want to say that it is important for us to build a relationship with god through reading the word of god because it is the word that is able to keep us in alignment with the will of god right that there's a song that um i have all like my always loved that song here it said it said there will be mountains that i would have to climb yeah and there will be battles that i will have to fight but a victory or defeat it's up to me to decide that how can i expect to win if i never tried and it continues to say that i just can't give up no i come too far from where i've started from nobody told me that the road would be easy and i don't believe he has brought me this far to leave me and the bible did declare that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us he reminds us in isaiah and even david declared it that he once he was young and now he's old he has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread therefore when you have accepted God when you have given your life over to him when you have confessed and accepted him as your Lord and Savior best believe that he will never leave you so it's for us to stay with him no matter what the struggles of life may be Bless the name of the Lord. So with that being said, I will be going into some scriptures right now. And these are scriptures that keep me as an individual or as a youth to keep rooted and grounded no matter what the situations of life may be. So I am going to read um, 1 John 2 verse 14. And it says... And it says, I have written unto you, fathers, because he have known him that is from the beginning. And I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Verse 14, it did declare, it said, I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. And it says, and the word of God abideth in you. And that is the part that I really want to get out there. That the word of God must remain within you. You must be living in the word of God in order for you to overcome the word wicked one for in order for you to overcome the evil one in order for you to overcome the tactics the plots the schemes that the enemy may place before you because it is like this we may be going out one day and something happens that will probably make us extremely angry and the bible did say that we can ang be angry and sin not but of course in this scenario you become angry and you begin to sin because you begin to curse yes you begin um to 
say words that aren't Christ-like. You begin to um, use curse words and things like that. And that is um, a struggle. That is a struggle because when you are out there and that happens, in your mind you're like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. So the inner you is fighting against the desires of your flesh of wanting to just get angry and reel out and fight the individual and things like that but what I want you to understand is that when these things happen take a step back and look into yourself and say um, there's something that um, we used to say in high school like what would God do what would Jesus do in this situation for you look into yourself and be like what would the word of God tell me to do in this case a lot of times I would say you know what God help me in this situation because if it's me alone I am going to go all out and people will look at me different and say I am a Christian and look how she go on and etc etc so God help me to be more of you help me to be the light in this situation and not a, a vessel that is used to glorify the devil in this situation right so that is one and there is also another scripture that i want to highlight from saint john 16 verse 33 where it says that these things have i spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world so he did the word of god did tell us that tribulations will come along which means that we will be fighting that we will be in constant wrestling as to be walking in righteousness we will be in constant fight to protect our soul and you know that when you begin to to walk in the righteousness of god that god is our keeper that he is our shepherd and all these things so he God he's able to keep us but we first have to acknowledge that we will face tribulation we first have to acknowledge that we will suffer we first have to acknowledge that we will go through things but God is able to keep us in the situation and as our keeper he will keep us in this world he will not allow us to die he will not forsake us he will put his hedge of protection around us he's able to preserve our soul from dying because he is our preserver and things along that line right so today i'm here to encourage you and let you know that first becoming a christian acknowledge that you will go through tribulation that you will suffer for christ but remember that when you suffer with him you will reign with him because our goal as christian is is to enter into eternal life is to have god as our savior is for us to know that on judgment day we will not hear depart from me i know you not but instead we will hear you know welcome in my good and faithful servant and things like that we have to fight for our souls as individuals and um there is uh there is something that came to me as i spoke about this because even david when david went to saul and said that hey i will be able to fight against goliath and saul was like who is you to come and say that you can fight against him? You can't fight against him. You're not a warrior, etc., etc. But David went ahead and said that, listen, I am a shepherd and I take care of my sheep. And whosoever comes, whatsoever come to cross the border, whatsoever crosses the border to destroy my sheep, I am going to take up my weapons to to kill them. I am going to take up my weapons to defend my sheep, to protect my sheep. Today, I'm letting you guys understand that 
God is our shepherd and we are his sheep. And when he sees that we are in a situation, he is there and ready to instruct us and to equip us with what we need to overcome certain things that are placed in our life, to overcome the season that we're in, to overcome the phase of life that we may be in. So today, be not dismayed. Be not do not feel as if God has forgotten you, but instead try to acknowledge that as a Christian, we should know that uh, we will face these things, but be of good cheer because Jesus have already overcome the world. And if he has overcome the world, we too are able to be overcomers because we have taken on the name of of Jesus Christ and it is a name that is above every other name so even if you're in the situation begin to call upon the name of Jesus because he will answer you he will come to you he will he will come through for you so today I'm just going to end off here because I don't want this video extremely long um, is that when you think of the word struggle, as I say, it is a forceful effort to get free of restraint or to resist attack, right? So, of course, you want to be free. And this is why you are struggling. You are struggling to do good because at the end of the day, you want to live a life of freedom. You want to live a life of righteousness because you want to live a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. And when you look at the word free, there are many definitions. But today I will be using this definition that says to remove something undesirable or restrictive from or to are restrictive from so today i can understand that as individuals we fight every day to remove something undesirable from out of our heart from out of our mind from the way we act from the way we um perceive certain things as individuals yeah, and the thing undesirable that we would want to remove from our life is everything that is displeasing in the sight of God. And I can give you um, a scripture to encourage you guys in doing this. So Psalm 119, reading from verse 9 to 16, says this. Wherewithal? Shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? So how can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. So you have to read the word of God as I said in the beginning. But don't only read the word of God. But ensure that you are taking heed. Ensure that you are living the word of God. Ensure that... If uh, you are doing something and the word of God says, um, I'm going to give an example. The word of God says, um, let love be without dissimulation. Ensure that that is the situation. Ensure that that is exactly what you're doing. You are allowing, you are ensuring that you are loving without dissimulation. You understand? And it continues and it says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. So let this be a prayer for you guys. It said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. So ensure that the word of God is within your heart so that you won't sin against him, God. So, so you are ensuring that the word is within you so that whatever you are doing, the word of God is there to say that I approve this in, the, in my word. So you are a light in this situation. You are being a salt of the earth in this situation. It says, um, Blessed art thou, O Lord, Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as 
in all riches. Then it continues in verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Verse 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. So of course I will have a part 2 um, to this video. So I will not be praying to close this video. But guys, read Psalm 119 from verse 9 to 16. Let it be upon your heart and let it be a prayer to God from your heart. Because really and truly, it is something, this is something that Christians should always say. God, teach me your statutes. Teach me what I should do in this situation. Lord, teach me to acknowledge you in everything so that you can direct my path in each situation. You know, so guys, struggling as youth can become less pressuring um it can become less pressuring when you begin to depend on the word of god so of course there will be a part two so guys keep sweet in the lord and i love you all